Pace, pace, pace. This is the DX21, and this is two chicks in a DX. And so far, it's just a DX. The two chicks are on either on their way or a wall. So I'm cracking the mic solo at this particular time. It's just me and Sosa here from S Street Media. How you doing, Sosa? Oh yeah, he 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 wasn't prepared for to be called on like that. So um. Yeah, he said he's doing good. First of all, I would like to have a moment of silence for freedom, a.k.a. Papa Wu, who was sent off last night in bed at the, hall, at the bed Re Restoration Plaza. Good brother. The last time we talked, he was uh, giving me a little bit of a counsel. But it was always interesting with, with Papa Wu. I remember the first time I actually met him was on the three train. I was coming back from seeing my daughters out there, my young earths in East New York, and I was on the three train heading uptown. And it was very interesting because I was just sitting there, you know, looking around the train. And then my eyes, you know how sometimes you just be looking, but you're not really looking at a person, you're just looking in that direction. And my eyes all of a sudden saw this guy go like, oh, like, oh, man, he saw me. And I'm like, who is that? And it turned out it was Papa Wu. But what was funny about it was the way he reacted as if he was, you know, trying to stay below the radar and I had found him. At that time, he was living in Harlem around 144th Street and... From there, we sort of building on an idea for an initiative for a school. And I still want to see that particular vision come to fruition. We were actually talking about it. Well, I mentioned it. We didn't really get in depth with it earlier this year. So it was a revolutionary idea for an educational system. And I'm looking forward to that happening. So I would like to take a brief moment of silence for freedom, a.k.a. Papa Wu. This week was an interesting week. Um, actually, I did poetry and pit for the first time. Uh, big up to S Street Media for putting that function on. The five spot out in Myrtle. I think the next one is January 30th. I think it's January 30th is the next one, right? 29th. I was off by a day. January 29th at the five spot. Poetry and Piff is going down. Willfully, I'll be uh, participating again. I'm going to have to dig into my bag of tricks because... I think I did a pretty decent set there the other night. I did three of my poems. The first one was Draw, which is showing, no, actually the first one was um, You Gonna Learn Today. You Gonna Learn Today, which is the usual fire that I bring. For those of you who are familiar with me in the poetry circuit back in the day, um, that was one of my trademarks that I always came with fire. And that's one reason why I started doing the more love poems and those ones that are more softer because you can't just be fire all the time. Sometimes you got to be ice. Sometimes you got to be water. I'm not trying to big up Game of Thrones with that fire and ice reference either. But yeah, I am the Jon Snow, Jon Crow Bobo, so it goes. But Poetry and Piff, I did the first one, You're Gonna Learn Today. Then I went into Draw, which was the softer side. And then I ended it with Bling, 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 Blah, 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 which is my critique on the state of hip hop. Back when I was at the Source magazine, the Source, which was like, at that time, the Bible of hip hop, although at that time that I was there was on sort of like a decline, so to speak, what some people would say, but it was a hip hop publication, the number one hip hop publication. And here I am, the editor in chief of the Source magazine. And if you came to my office at any time, I was not playing hip hop. I was playing all rap because there's a difference between hip hop and rap. I was not playing rap music. I was playing reggae. And to me, reggae is still has that element of consciousness and spirituality and substance that is lacking in mainstream rap music today. So I was with the reggae because that's what the vibes was. And to this day, although from time to time I get caught up in a couple of artists because there's a 
I think it was with Jocelyn Flores by XXX Tentacion. Uh, I don't. I never was really good with the pronunciation of his name, but Jocelyn Flores had me, and even his boy slash rival sometimes. Um, no, it wasn't. He wasn't involved in it. That was that was Takashi to have beef with him. Trippy Red, that Love Scar song. His vocals on Love Scars, it's just that I go with vibrations. And Trippy Red's Love Scars, if you have a chance to really just listen to his vocals and the intensity of the vibrations and tones that he's coming with, that, that was something that struck a chord with me. So when I hear a song that has some type of atmosphere, some type of vibration, some type of um, emotional substance, then I, I'll, I'll fucks with it. I fucks with a lot of these um, cats that's out here now that some people would even call mumble rappers. But when I listen to mumble rappers, what I think about is scatting in jazz. Sometimes it's not about what your words are. It's about the tones and the melodies. And sometimes that bit it, bit it, bit it, bit it. it. The only thing that I have with that is that everybody's doing the same thing. It. Everybody seems to have the same flow. That's my only problem with it. Innovate with it. You don't have to say, and, and the kids in the street, they all rhyme in that same pattern. Like, you can't rhyme unless you rhyme da -da 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 that same tone. And there's nothing wrong with it. You can be creative within that particular paradigm. Just like in reggaeton, every song has the same beat, but there's so many different things that they do with reggaeton. But when people say, oh, I can't mess with that mumble rap, they ain't talking, but you messed with Ella Fitzgerald, right? You you messed with um, damn, I can't even remember her name right now. It, um, Billy Holiday and all those other people and Dizzy Gillespie who would scat. That's not words. And you even messed with Michael Jackson. And come on, Michael Jackson used to make up words like crazy. And he used to, but it, but it, he used to do that stuff too. So you can't knock it just because you're looking for a way to hate on the next generation because there's a tradition of using tones as opposed to lyrics within black music. And it goes way back before these so-called mumble rappers. So give them a break and try to feel the vibrations of what they're doing as opposed to looking for super lyricism all the time. Because there are some super lyricisms within some of those paradigms. Not often, I would say, but there are. But if you're not listening at all, not giving them a chance based on, oh, they ain't saying nothing, they just mumble rappers, then you might miss a jewel. A rare jewel, <laughs> but there are some out there. But I say all of this to say, and to make a long story longer, reggae was my vibration. And last week, I had a chance to go on the Welcome to Jam Rock Cruise. Excuse me, the Welcome to Jam Rock Reggae Cruise. Brand is an important thing to them, you know, so you have to make sure it's the Welcome to Jam Rock Reggae Cruise, and not just the Welcome to Jam Rock Cruise. But anyway, I spent that whole week on a Royal Caribbean cruise liner. And I can tell you this much, if it being a Royal Caribbean cruise line, you can imagine what the food was like. There was like curry everything. There was curry goat. There was curry lamb. There was curry chicken. There was curry beef. There were curry chicken patties with cocoa bread, by the way. And in addition to that, any other aspect of the Caribbean that you want, at some point they were serving it. There was the saltfish was there with the with the ground provisions and the banana. It's, it's a wonderful to go to a breakfast on a ship and is your choice of boiled dumplings or fried dumplings and banana and yam. And it was a wonderful thing. Only thing was I was so busy grinding, I, I sometimes didn't even remember to eat. And, and, and going on a cruise, one of the most important things about the cruise is the all-you-can-eat buffets. And I missed out on that total experience because I was too busy grinding. I took like 7,000 photos on this trip. Seven friggin' thousand photos. And I still have to sort through them. But right now, if you want to catch a little sample of what went down, you can go to Essence.com right now. I have an article there. Dayson Emanuel is the byline. That's D-A-S-U-N. I M A N U E L, and it's like views from the Jam Rock Reggae Cruise. 14 of those photos are mine, and 
you get a little sample. I have another article that's coming up that I'm constructing right now. So you have a chance to check that out. The Welcome to Jam Rock Reggae Cruise on Essence.com. And I have other articles that are there. Y'all could check those out as well. Specifically, not specifically, but specifically, the Cool Girl's Guide to Kingston. I, that was the last one before I did this one now. So please check that out. Jason Emanuel on Essence.com. Interestingly enough, today I sometimes have these flashbacks when I'm going back into the 90s. There's certain aspects of New York City where you'll find that it looks like it's caught in a time warp. Like you step into a specific space and it feels like you're back in 1995, 1994, 1992. Like there should be a boot camp song playing in the background. How many MCs? Bucktown, USA. You know, something like that. Or I got you open. Or even an appropriate Wu-Tang song off the 36 Chambers uh, album. Did you have a chance to check that Hulu special? If, you're, if you haven't watched that Hulu special, you need to check that. You need to check The Godfather of Harlem on Epics. Now, I think that Godfather of Harlem may be to Epics what power was to stars. Because I think people are coming on and signing up for that subscription to Epics based on Godfather of Harlem with Forrest Whitaker. And I can tell you, every show, every movie... Whether it's about dungeons and dragons and wizards and stuff like that, whether it's set in outer space, whether it's set in the past, no matter where it's set or what time frame, whether it be the future or the past or another world, it's about today. Every show has a message that is pertinent to today, no matter where it's set as far as the world and no matter where it's set as far as the time, it is about this day and time now. And the Godfather of Harlem has a lot of lessons for today as far as the so-called black community, African-American. I don't subscribe to African-American. If you heard the show before, uh, the previous episode, I don't subscribe to African-American at all because if you're an African-American, then who's the Nigerian with citizenship papers? Are they African, African-American? No. And not only that, but African-American keeps you compartmentalized and divided because if you're running with the African-American identity, then that separates you from the person who has the Caribbean identity, which incidentally is still in America. <laughs> the United States is a very, very arrogant country in that it takes the identity of like two continents for itself. Brazil is America. Peru is America. Guatemala is America. Honduras is America. Canada is America. All of these countries are within the Americas, but yet only one calls itself America. So I'm still embracing, even though my co-host, who is on her way as we speak willfully, is she's not really with me saying or getting with the people of the global majority, but I think that that is a better identification for us because we as people of melanin, because I won't say people of color, because every time I see people of color, and I've said this before, I think about the 50s and 60s when they had this, or, or just the whole Jim Crow South aspect where they had colored people over certain water fountains, colored folks here, whites only over here. So why are we regressing? We went from being colored to being Negro to being black and black and proud. And that was a hard fought battle because people didn't want to be black. And I know technically there's very few people who are black and some of them are blue black. But as an identity, black is a unifier. The reason why the white identity was put together was to unify them, but yet they still have us divided. A Jamaican will go against a Trinidadian, will go against a Haitian, will go against a St. Lucian. And we're looking at these identities of these islands as opposed to seeing ourselves as being one people. As Marcus Garvey said, one God, one name, one destiny. We're one people. So that's why I like the global majority thing, because that includes every other country except for the ones that are in Europe, I guess. <laughs> and it's funny that those 
little space in the world, Europe, went and conquered everybody else. And did they really conquer us or did we conquer ourselves? I used to like this story by Aesop Fables. Um, I think it was an Aesop Fable where the monkey goes to the hippopotamus and says that he's stronger than a hippopotamus and the hippopotamus laughs at him like, he was like, yeah, I'm going to prove it. Let's do a tug of war. And then he goes to the elephant and tells the elephant, I'm stronger than you. Let's prove it. Let's have a tug of war. And ultimately, the monkey gets the hippopotamus and the elephant, he tricks them into playing a tug of war against each other. But they think that they're playing a tug of war with the monkey. So they both bow to the monkey and said the monkey is the strongest. And that to me was the European. And we were the hippopotamus and we were the elephant. The European came amongst us and got us playing a tug of war against ourselves. And then we're thinking that they're all powerful. No, they were good at manipulating situations. They were good at exploiting the divisions that existed between us. And we don't learn. How many hundreds of years has it been? It's been 500, over 500 years since the Pope in Rome gave forth a papal bull that allowed uh, the slavery trade to begin in what is called, what's that, that that country right off the top? I'm seeing it in my mind. Cape Verde. Cape Verde, I'm probably mispronouncing it, but Cape Verde was where the initial sanction for slavery happened when the Pope granted Portugal the right to go and take these heathens and bring them in. And yeah, slavery existed before then in certain forms within the African community, and it was taken to another level by Islam. I know y'all hate to admit it, but there's, you know, the white Arabs and their white Christians, and they both had a hand in slavery along with uh, other factions that if we probably talked about it too much, I would be called anti-something. And I don't want to be called anti-something because I'm not anti-anything except for anti-devilishment and anti-stupidity. I'm anti-stupidity every day, all day. I have a very low tolerance for stupidity. And some people say, well, that's, that's, that's judgmental. How could you call somebody stupid? Well, I mean, I don't throw that term around loosely. You have to earn it. <laughs> and a lot of people, <laughs> they work hard to earn that title of stupid. It's like they're proud. Like they're like, today, what can I do to show that I'm the most ignorant person on the face of this earth? Let me do a checklist here. I can do this. I can do that. But yeah, I'm not a person who is so-called judgmental. But you got to call the deuce a deuce and the spade a spade. And if the shoe fits, maybe you need to stomp in it. Getting back on course, I just lit up a black and mild. I was supposed to have quit like a month ago. And I've been meaning to, but I guess it'll play itself out. Maybe today might be the day I stop. Anybody want to take a wager? <laughs> the the next show that I will not have a black and mild in my hand. Yeah, let, let's hit the comments up. Or, or, or let's get some feedback up. Let's see if we can get a pool running. Those who are for me ending the black and mild, and those who are against, and whether I can do it or not. I also got some Skittles today. You know, Skittles used to have gelatin in them, and I, as a god from Nation of Gods and Earths, five percent, if you will, cannot eat anything that has swine involved in it and gelatin 99.9 percent .9 of the time is made with tallow from the pork the piggy from porky pig and they took the gelatin out of skittles now this is one of my favorite candies is growing up but my number one by the way is swedish fish swedish fish is my number one all time since childhood candy now, I was able, once I saw that the Skittles were gelatin-free, to indulge once again, and I was in bliss. I was able to indulge in the Skittles. But now, I'm looking at the wrapper, because you have to check the wrapper. You got to check the labels, just like Rizza said on uh, Jizz's album, Liquid Swords. You got to check the labels. You got to read the labels, because you don't know what you're taking into your system if you do not read those labels. I'm seeing now that it has genetically modified organisms in it. So they take out the pig and instead they add in these genetically modified organisms. So you, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. They get rid of one form of swan, so to speak, and then they add an X. So I'm still 
every once in a while indulging in those Skittles, but I don't really trust these genetically modified organisms. But now with the legislation that they have out with Trump and everything, they're not required to tell you whether they have genetically modified organisms in your food. And since this is a new phenomenon, we don't know what the long-term effects are, are of these particular genetically modified organisms that they put in our food because enough time hasn't passed that people have been ingesting these things for us to know if there are any long-term side effects. So I don't know. I have a friend who is, well, I say should say a brother because I don't really have a use for friends. I say his sisters, brothers, and others. So either you fam or you flim flam. So I really have very little use for friends. So if I'm calling you a friend, y'all might you should look at me with a short eye because that means that I'm not really putting the real value on you. You have to be fam for me. But he was talking about how he is a farmer in Grenada back at home. He has a farm in Grenada. And these Monsanto people, is that the correct pronunciation? Monsanto, those people who started out with, I think, making like Teflon and stuff like that, but whatever. They are chemical people who have gotten heavy into farming and genetically modified organisms and all those other things. I just got a text from Tasha saying that she's heading our way. So she should be joining us uh, very soon. TM, the trademark, Tasha Mabry. But he was telling me that these Monsanto people were giving the farmer seed and requiring you to take your seed from them. I think there was some type of legislation or whatever was being enforced. And when they gave you the seed, he said they told you to wash your hands after you had handled the seeds. Now, he said he's never known any seed in his entire life or he was in his 40s and he had been farming since he was a child and his people have been farming for generations. He said he had never heard of a seed where you had to wash your hands after handling it. So what are they putting on these seeds that they're requiring you to wash your hands after handling the seed? And not only that, but the seed do not reproduce. It's not like after you have one yield in the crop that you can replant from those. You have to get a seed every single time. So therefore, it's about business. It's about product life. When I was studying business, they always talked about how every product has a certain lifespan because they want to make sure that you're buying another one. If your television lasts forever, then you're never going to buy a new television. And the biggest scam, and everybody seems to be falling for it, is the newest version of the phones or the newest version of the computer. But the thing about it is they put a black eye in the game in that if you don't get the latest thing, they upgrade the technology so that your computer is not compatible. Because I have a, like a Mac, an iMac that I bought in, say, like 2008, but I can't have it online because it doesn't gel with the current technology that's out there. If I download the most recent operating system on my computer, it will fry the drive. And that actually happened. I had to replace my whole drive because the technology that exists now just basically decimated my drive. But all of this is to make sure that we keep on purchasing. Back in the days when we were growing up, and I'm speaking for people who came up in the 80s and, and, and such, who hit their prime in the 90s, and if you didn't hit your prime in the 90s or were around from the 90s, I feel sorry for you. You missed out. But on a positive note, what goes around comes back around again. There's going to be another era that feels like the 90s coming real soon, and you're going to be there to participate on it. It's not happening right now, though, but it's going to come soon because what goes around comes back around again. But back in those days, if you came up in a generation, we would get things repaired. Now we have this disposable culture where you don't get things repaired. You just throw it out and get a new one. And that keeps the money flowing and it keeps the money flowing out of your pocket and into the, the system. I really hope that Tasha gets here soon because... Talking to myself is cool. I like the sound of my voice and willfully you out there like the sound of my voice as well. But it's better when I have someone to, how do they say it? Conversate with. <laughs> Even though we know that the proper terminology is converse. I still like to conversate every now and then. 
So I would like to conversate with her. Once again, I just want to, if y'all haven't had a chance to, go right now to computer, to your computer, and type in essence.com and check out that Welcome to Jam Rock reggae cruise piece. I'm going to have another one that's coming. It's more like a travel log because it was a five day cruise. And like I said in this particular article, there were so many party options. While you were there on the ship, you might have Stone Love on one level. You might have Kingston 12 Sound on another area. DJ Gringo in another area. All playing at the same time. That looks like Tasha calling me right now. Maybe she's at the front. So we'll see what's going on with that. But... There were like three different parties going on simultaneously. And that's not counting the fact they had movies going on. There were different shows going on all all at the same time. So it was like you were a kid in a candy store if you were a person who is a part of the culture of reggae music. As Damian Marley himself said... The dance hall is where the dance is being held. So this Royal Caribbean ship, Independence of the Seas, was a floating dance hall. And there were all aspects of the culture happening. There was a sound clash. There was wetty wetty on the water happening. In that we had stone love popping there. You don't get any more raw raga than having stone love on the set and what's his name jeevis the selector or the dj from from stone love he is on 24 7 from the minute i got on the ship his presence was filling the entire deck wherever he was that person is a character a character, if you will. And it was a pleasure to be on the ship with individuals just as himself. Because you were on the ship with artists. You were on the ship with the DJs. You were on the ship with people of all nationalities. There was some of the, you know, the, the Melanin Challenge folks there. But for the most part, it was beautiful black people of so many nations. And I can say, of course, Jamaica was represented the deepest but it seems that the close second, surprisingly, was VI. The Virgin Islands was in there ridiculously stupid deep. Everywhere you went was that 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 VI flag you know, with that that eagle and such and such and ray ray. VI was in there deep. So I can't I can't even say who was the third deep because the, other than Jamaica and VI, other people were like well represented in proportion i think that those were the two largest contingents jamaica and vi and i didn't see much of barbados but i heard that that was probably because barbados recently had a celebration i think it might have been the independence day or something like that so a lot of the Bayesians were back home spending their money they they weren't spending their money with, with, with the Marlies at that particular time and i see that tasha mabry is in the house and she's over here. Of course, she likes that VI aspect because, of course, um, you have roots where? Peace, fam. Peace, peace, peace. How are you doing looking delectable as usual? Thank you very much. Wait a minute. So can you pass me that thing right there on the chair? Yeah, pass me that thing there on the chair. Peace, everybody. No, not that. Oh, not that thing. The other <laughs> thing. Oh, I see that thing that she's talking about. Yeah, yeah. That thing. Thank you. All right. Uh, so you're here. I'm here. I'm a little sad. You started without me. I'm well, I mean, you, as 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 my elder, the show goes on. As one monkey don't stop the circus. Not saying that no, you are a monkey, because okay. you are far from a monkey. Indeed. You are too fine to be a monkey. And All right, and I, I I was I tried to call the strong one, the vortex she vixen. She is traveling safely. She is traveling. Texas. Oh, she's going to TX. Yes. Isn't that where one of our estranged comrades disappeared to a while back? I believe so, and now he's lost in the VI. Yeah, he said he was going on a sabbatical. This is the like, well, one thing I, I I find interesting about this particular individual we're talking about. Um, should I mention them their name? I mean, 
It's all good. Big up DJ Franchise. Yeah, big up Franchise. AKA Lord Omni. Now, this is the type of dude who will buy a one way ticket to someplace far, far away, go there, and then figure out how he's going to get back once he gets there. Yeah, that's amazing. No matter how long it takes, that's the type of life he lives. That's when you ain't got no kids. <laughs> That's a, no, that's a no kids life. I'm not How mad. do you go someplace without an exit plan? You just go there and you're gonna work your way back. That is that's that's kind of it's kind of dope kinda, if you think I about think it. So. It's kind of <laughs> free. I'll just be. You just go somewhere and then figure out how you're getting back when you get there. So you might be there two weeks. You might be there three weeks. You might be there three months. As was the case last time. So is he now in the VI? I think he said he was going back to VI for um for sabbatical. Okay, shout out to the Davis family. Shout out to the White family. Shout uh, out to the Hendricks. You, shout, shout out to the Shinneries from V It It pains me and to the hear that terminology. And the Davis, whatever. I did a eulogy. I am old enough to be able to say shout out, big up. Don't <sighs> rap to me. I mean, can I we just acknowledge? <laughs> can we just acknowledge? I did a eulogy for a shout out in Hot 97. What was that? In like the year 2000 or something? A eulogy for a shout out. Yes, we put cute. the shout like out to bed. No, shout out the dead. shout out is dead. I did a nice little eulogy. Maybe well, I could find that. I and maybe we could play that it. your eulogy did not reach me. And the, wait, we, we smoking stuff? This is just a black and mild. Oh. I'm not smoking stuff. Let's keep it clear. This is 100%. I'm trying to get my Facebook live popping, but you know, okay. I'm from rotary phones. This is 100% chemically altered tobacco. Because <laughs> oh, you know this I ain't the real those, shit. But I'm not going to smoke that. From what yeah, I learned. I'm going to be a hypocrite. You're going to be a hypocrite. Yes. From what I learned within the Native American traditions, tobacco is a great medicine. However, you do not buy medicine medicine is given if you buy medicine that exchange takes away the power some of the power from what i've been told oh, so if medicine. you're buying medicine then automatically is losing its potency so big pharma guess what according to the traditions of my people here as we call it turtle island as you call it north america your medicine is null and void the minute we pay for it it's supposed to be given uh I mean, you can say what you want to say. I'm just going according to the traditions of our, I would say, ancestors. Well, was, who said this, though? Where'd you get this from? Is this one of those they say? No, I got it straight from one of the prominent members in the Cherokee community by the name of Lightfoot. Okay, so I guess then my, my, my response to that would be because healing is a relationship. Healing is an exchange. Healing is... is done in community so like kind of the selling of medicine is the separation of a relationship but what i would say on the other hand is i mean while i think that medicine should be free and all that goody good it's all in, in your mind it's all placebo effect anyway yeah Even though also, i will take a motrin out this bitch on some <laughs> placebo effect with that motrin yeah and i think that it's the ritual yeah the placebo effect the whole ritual of taking that medicine is an affirmation to your mind right. and that is your greatest organ it's your greatest sexual organ it's your greatest healing mechanism yeah i feel like you know this is something i've been thinking about lately i feel like the mind is a terrible thing and it must be beat into submission and that i am not my mind hmm then what I'm are you? It. I'm the I'm the one who watches the mind. I'm the seer. Shout out to Muji, who I was listening to on the way here. <laughs> yeah. But if I'm the seer, then the mind is part of the body. That's like being my shoe, my mind. But that's not I am. I think that the mind is the receptor. If you really want to, if I really, you want me to go freaky with it? Because, yep. you know, you know, I got a bipolar one diagnosis. So my mind goes a lot of different places. To me, it's just an excuse to have your mind go a bunch of different places. My mind goes a bunch of different places. Yeah, but you probably just don't have the diagnosis, which is a license to ill. I guess my period. Like the Beastie <laughs> Boys. It trumps that. My period trumps that. Well, I can't speak <laughs> on that. I've never experienced a period exactly firsthand. Window, so you want to talk about mind being all over the place. Well, Shout out to everyone who has a period. Well, I mean, listen, in the comments or, or whatever's hidden, uh, let's see. What, what is the, 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 the greatest thing as far as a license to ill? Is it menstru menstruation? 
menstruation or is it mental health challenges? Does a schizoaffective disorder diagnosis trump PMS? And why the hell is this going on? No. Well, let's see what the people think. Let's see what they think. What do the people say? And we'll come back next week and, and, and we'll talk about what what the consensus was on that. Whether I, but I think maybe I disagree with the premise. I feel like there is no license to ill. Then the Beastie Boys would have a problem with you. It's okay. And the Beastie Boys were the ones who like really kept the lights on for a while. Fool. For, 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 for Russell and Rick. Okay, but that wasn't my lights. Russell and Rick Rubin. That's why. I, um, but I don't know. Def Jam seemed like it kind of fell off recently. My lights stay on now, but it is not the Beastie Boys. Shout out. Not to the Beastie Boys. But a boy that does your beastly? <laughs> <laughs> only men do my beastly. Oh, only men. Excuse me. I was just staying with the whole Beastie Boys I know, as a metaphor. I know, but you know, whatever. So you missed me talking about Welcome to Jam Rock, Ray I Gay know, Cruz. I did. Did you see anybody you, I mean, any girls you like to see? I know I heard you, I heard all of that other stuff. Oh, no, I mean. I saw a little clip of Boozhoo. Yeah, I just want to say this here. And no this is excluding right all of the booty shots. Because there were people who were there. I saw people look like they're in sweater and turtleneck. Yeah, but let me just comment that some of the gluteus maximus on that ship was beyond ridiculous. Mm. And it was natural. Were they showing it like Labor Day? They were showing it like they were in a dance hall in the 90s. At, ooh, dance hall in the 90s. They were showing Them it no, like no, that. No, 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 Nice. The, and, I mean, not like I ever did that. And what I was watching, like one time I saw a woman who had, she had on Daisy Dukes, right? My back mad long, though. She had on Daisy Dukes. <laughs> okay. Why are you pulling them down? She pulled down a Daisy She was pulling down a Daisy I'm like, they what the already up. Yeah, why did it? <laughs> Why, if, why, if you wanted to keep your butt cheeks from being exposed, why did you wear those shorts? Well, she just didn't put on a bathing suit. I don't know, but she's up there steadily pulling down her her her, her Daisy Dukes. Well, you know, so, so, so people can see. No, but why was she pulling it down? I mean, every time it rolled up, she pulled it down. I'm watching her pull them down. Like, oh, comprendo. Yeah, I mean, why did you wear them if you don't Hold want your, your butt cheeks to hang out? Yeah, and she had some nice chocolate skin too. Okay. And it was it so was, shapely. Right, this is getting weird. It's getting weird because you're a woman, but I'm yeah, sure that all so of the male saying, listeners okay, are appreciating this. It's not this. so much getting weird that you're telling me that there was beautiful women on the boat, but it's because you're talking like this, and you're getting all sensual. And it's weird. I was not being sensual. It's so not fair. Give me a pull. Give me one of them black and miles. Um, you could take a pull. <sighs> you could take a pull if you wanted to kill the bull. All right. Yeah. But like I was saying, some of it was just defying. Oh, she don't like it. Some of it was against the laws of nature, how the shapes were. And they had the nerve to have one, in one aspect, a thong bikini. What are you talking about, a thong bikini? What is this conversation? I'm talking about the sights because now you, you of the know, Welcome the to Jam Rock changing, Cruise. You take, take because out of the um, conversation. Now you're talking to Sosa. I wasn't talking to Sosa. Yeah, I was looking in that direction. You're talking to a man because your back is turning no, me. I'm here, Okay, King. let me look at you. But now I feel like I'm cheating on my memories. <laughs> I'm cheating on my memories. I love that. I done cheated on a couple of fantasies or two. Does that count? Yeah, yeah. We can we can put that in the on the on the on the chalkboard there. On my yeah, I mean it was wonderful. Okay, so it was great. If y'all have an experience, I mean, what the men look like? Were they fat and disgusting, or were they built? Were oh, there they was good? a few that were fat and disgusting. Ugh. All right, but I'm just Some saying. Might even say would, I was a part of them. I don't know. Me? No, I'm just saying. Would it be something for me to look at? Oh yeah, there was, but I wasn't really taking note of that. All right, so I'm just saying, throw it out there, like you know. Okay, yes, yeah, ladies, yeah, if you were looking for a piece of beefcake, the bakery was open. Thank you. That's all we want. The bakery so, no, was open. I don't need to go to a boat to see asses. Oh, no, no. I went to the boat and saw them. I didn't yes. go there to, to see, see them. I, know I, I them went there to out. cover it for Essence. And you can go to Essence.com right now and check one Very of the articles. Article. Really Dayson Emmanuel with the I. I-M-A-N-U-E-L Emmanuel. You can check out my article. And you can check out all the articles I've done so far. But in that pictorial, 14 of those photos are mine. Oh. Oh, very nice. So when you were looking at those photos, 14 of them so were mine. So my homegirl got her name up on them joints. 
What homegirl? There were other four Shout photographers. Photog- Say if there was, the if there were thirty-five pictures, only fourteen were mine. So other photographers got well, to eat off of that too. You thought I got to look at thirty-eight thousand pictures? I ain't got time. Well, I have seven thousand I have to look at. <sighs> Lucky you. Yeah, and I got some good shots. Some of them came out freaky, but I got some you good like shots. Nice. No, no, I mean because sometimes when your camera is moving and the performers are moving and the lights, okay, are, yeah. the stage lights are hitting funny. With the image that comes out, sometimes looks like abstract art. Okay, I can see that. Yeah, so I'm I'm saving some of those images. How are your interviews? The interviews. The first interview I did was Skip Marley. Okay, and we all know who Skip Marley is. Tell me now. that's not true. Yeah, uh-huh. dun, 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 dun. Tell me that's not true. Gotcha. I love that song. The first time, and big up to my daughter, Shonda Nala. Okay. Yeah, Shonda Nala, because she was the one who put me on to Skip Marley. And I told Skip when I met him and did the interview that my daughter was the one who put me on to you. Okay, that's what's up. Yeah, so big up to Shonda Nala. And when I met him I, and had a chance to interview him, it was a very good experience. I'm, when he came up on stage, you could see that the polish and the preparation has been put into this young man as an artist okay. when he came out you knew him all he was on the stage Very nice. you knew him all he was on the stage next one the, the next interview after skip marley was and i can't hit that note toast I coffee yeah very nice and i must say how was that she is a very kind person very she kind is respectful polite she's not I mean, she's a young. She's, yeah, a child. she's nineteen years old. Yeah, okay. she's, she's nineteen, and she also was kind of—I I wouldn't say shy. That's okay. not the correct word. Timid is not the correct word. Maybe reserved. Or... Reserved, okay. but um, laid back, you know. But she was so polite. Contained, maybe. Like she would 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 say please, and 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 when she was asking for stuff, as opposed to most artists or some artists who have the ego just demanding. Oh, well, mm. she got home training. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's what it is. That's nice. And I wonder how Shout long is it going to last? Parents. But I don't know. But yeah, she's a she's a, a um. Up and they won't depart. She still say please and thank yeah, you. Yeah, she's she's um she's with a good team. And I don't know where all these things. Yeah, I think that she does have sort of quote unquote a tomboyish look. Okay. But I'm hearing that they that back home that they're savage and are saying that she's you know in the life. But. First of all, I don't know about you, but I've never known of any rosters to, you know, put on the stage a person who might be cause of controversy back home. That's all I can say. And I see that Tasha has zipped her lip on this. Why have you zipped your lip on this? For fear of what will spill out. Oh, oh, okay. She doesn't want to go ham because we don't do pork. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's my grandmama bacon. Oh, so you have to come from yeah. Alabama, but she's gone, so you know that's, that's oh, a wrap. All right. But um, not, well, we don't. Do, I mean, it's yo. We don't do a lot of things. Mm-hmm. We don't do a lot of things. It's twenty twenty. She nineteen. Bounty. She ain't here for the fifty-year-old. She here for the nineteen-year-old. Yeah, Bounty did. I can't believe my eyes. Oh wow, that's nice. But he kind of didn't do every lyric, if you know what I mean. Well, could he? Well, I mean, when he did his little, I guess on, on the high seas he could. But they said, "Nah, motherfucker, we in, we in we in international waters or some shit. We in U.S. waters." No, I think that when he performed, we were. Docked in either Ultra Reels. I think we were docked in Ultra Reels at the time. Oh, okay. Yeah, we were docked in Ultra Reels. And he did, I can't believe my eyes. And then one thing I've noted, what I learned, and I already knew it, but it was reinforced to me when I was watching that particular concert, was that a reggae performance is not just a performance. It's not just a show. Mm -hmm. It's an affirmation and reinforcement of cultural values, mores, and ethics. Can be. Yeah, because Bounty, you know, between the songs, when he would sit down and he would start talking to the audience, Mm -hmm. and I saw it happen with I, Wayne, Mm -hmm. 
That's some Rasta shit, though. Yeah, That's but wild. but is does Bounty, although he does big up Selassie and a lot of his songs, does he portray the typical image of a Rasta or a Shata? No, but well, he was a warlord. But then again, Rastafari Sometimes I'm needs like, his army. The, I mean, I'm just, I mean, it's too complicated to say yay or nay or this or that. I'm saying everybody is kind of wavy and paisley anyway. We only get you know into what trouble I found? when we box. It, you know what I found interesting about reggae music? What? Is it even on the slack songs? Be, in the beginning I know. of the Selassie! I know. It, like you're about to I talk know. about some slackness, exactly. but yet you're bigging up Selassie in the Good beginning. Good know. John know she a hoe. You know, it's like it's like they still big it even even in the slack songs, the artists still big up Selassie and Ja. That's very interesting. And okay. that's what I that's what I found missing in hip hop is that backbone, that consciousness, that spirituality to the great extent that it permeates reggae. But we never put that in our music unless it was gospel music. Five percenters, Zulu Nation. <laughs> Them is, we, them, were, those are, we were the street right. knowledge aspect. But okay, the street knowledge aspect, but we're talking about reggae music as an expression of that particular culture at large. 5% of Zulu Nation is a, a, a niche expression of black culture. So for the most part, black culture has not done, has not mixed, let's say, sacred ideas with secular ideas. The Western culture keeps everything so split so that you have to have church music or you have to have worldly music. But I don't think that black culture here has found a way to merge those two ideas. But reggae does it. It's the culture that has been able to do it. If you it. listen to Leela Ike's song, and I know that I was talking a no, lot of stuff it, about Leela. No, I but Lila. it's the culture. Reggae is an expression of a culture. So even the Shata is going to big up Selassie I because he got home training. They all going to big up Jesus. They all going to know their prayers. They all know the Lord's Prayer. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and the 23rd Psalm. That ain't no Rasta book. That's a Christian book. So it's part of a culture that I think they've been able to merge the ideas of secular and sacred a little better than the West, or at least than we do over And here. that's why reggae is suffering here in the West. I was having reggae a discussion. Reggae because Afro be popping. <laughs> which is another way for the industry to be divisive. Why is it divisive? Why is, isn't it just a, 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 an evolution, an expression, an expansion? No, I, I mean, why. ultimately, it's going back to Africa anyway, because reggae is just an extension of the, the, the drum. Everything hip hop is the extension. The of African the drum. drum. Well, Everything yeah. is the extension. And, of and the hip hop came out of the womb of reggae. Yeah, it well, did. they were born together ish. No, yeah, they were no, not you born right, together. Right. I understand. <laughs> where was Grandmaster I I Flash? From? I know, I get it. I know, I know the history. Where's Grandmaster Flash from? I don't know where he's from. Barbados. Well, everybody was. Where's, where's Cool? Yeah. Where's Cool Herc from? Where, Jamaica. Jamaica. Yeah, I know. And exactly. the sound system element was what inspired the whole. Party element totally, that happened I understand, in there. I understand. That's what I'm saying. I, I totally agree. And if you didn't see the video for Bomb with Jay Z and Damian Marley, they actually touched on that. And I think that's the first time that I've really heard it talked about at that level in the mainstream about the connection between reggae and hip hop. Okay. Only certain bookworms. But we know that. We've known that from kids. Really? Yeah. I mean, do you go around really saying that hip hop and reggae? But you know, you don't have to say. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, you know. I think that the average person's. Nowadays, the average rap music fan, I will not de I don't know. degrade them, the, the essence of hip hop by saying they're hip hop fans, but the average rap fan doesn't really know the connection. I don't know. To me, the only difference between the reggae chant and the so called black rap was the accent because it was the same type of flows. And another thing is the reggae rhymed every, like the whole verse would rhyme as opposed to couplets. I understand. And you see Buster Rhymes, when he did his rhymes, he brought in the reggae element. Like his whole verse totally would rhyme from beginning to end, just like reggae style. Yeah, see, but like I just feel like so black is black is black is black. That's what we do. You sound like a De La Soul song. <laughs> it is what it is. I Shout out to, <laughs> to De La Soul. Black is black. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what we do. I just think we make... So even... Okay, let's say, for example, even with... With Afrobeat, like you say, um, reggae is suffering. I say it's because Afrobeat is popping. I'm not saying that that should or shouldn't be. I'm just saying that the people, same people who listen to reggae, listen to Afrobeat. 
because we know the foundation is the same music and it's okay it's okay to say i like i'm gonna fuck with this right now and like reggae don't have to be saved it ain't gonna get destroyed but it don't but gotta be not saved what I'm you don't need no fucking supplements it's not because before afro beats was popping reggae was suffering what i'm saying and how can reggae suffer what is dark mean him to, for i would like to, to, big, to big up and acknowledge my brother dark him be a law christ and you can check him out on uh, in the wonderful world of cyberspace. Dark I'm gonna know what BLR stands for. He says B that he be a law. Oh, be a law. Okay. Yeah, that he is born a law. Be or born. Dark I understand him be a law. English. I didn't know what you said. All right, and we were having a discussion about reggae music, and he was saying that the reason why reggae has suffered is because it refused to compromise. With what? With a lot of the things that are going on in the and system. And what does it mean that reggae suffers? What does that mean? That it was marginalized by the music industry because it refused to accept certain morals is that and a suffering? mores of Western society. Right. Is that compromise. a suffering? I don't. I mean, they're that, not getting the same money as that rap. That does people. not mean it's a suffering. Money don't mean you're not suffering, and not money doesn't mean you are suffering. Everything has its place. If it can be pure in its expression, money doesn't mean it's succeeding versus not succeeding. And I agree, but I'm so talking about as far as a prominence. I don't agree with the premise that success in money means success versus reggae has its niche, its industry, it wants to remain pure and not necessarily compromise with Western ideology and all them things, so then it gets to stay in a place. If you, it don't get to run, the ocean doesn't run all the way over the land, it has a tide. So what? And I don't think that that tide means it's suffering. I think we, we add Commercially, that on. put it that way. It's not suffering. Fuck commercially. I listen to reggae music. It don't, I'm not... What, what does commercially have to do with those who love music? Because commercially means that money is going back to Jamaica that, that can help empower no, the No, it doesn't. It means money is going back to people and they're going to decide what the fuck to do with their own money. Well, that and does, the story, but just like of, everybody do now. So money going back nowhere don't mean money go yeah, back nowhere. That's the premise that a person is selfish. And regardless... People are selfish. Not all. I didn't say that. I'm just saying I don't agree with the premise that success versus suffering mean has anything to do with the commercial state Okay, so let me change the game. my language here. And so I don't think reggae is Reggae suffering. has been ostracized by, by the Western music industry. Who gives industry. a fuck? We don't care. It hasn't been ostracized by me. People who love reggae don't ostracize reggae. Tons of music don't get the light of day where us tons of people still love it. But who cares? had reggae compromised, it would be getting the same spotlight so as rap. Why, and then it wouldn't be reggae because rap is not fucking rap. I mean, fuck this shit that's out here now. <laughs> fucking crazy. So hip hop compromised and sold this asshole out. And we want reggae to do that for bread too? No, Fuck reggae has here. not done that. Now I'm just, want to smoke a cigarette. No, my observation is that because it didn't compromise, it's been ostracized right, by but, Western society. Okay, but to use, but in the same language we say, has not compromised, been ostracized by Western society, therefore it's suffering. I disagree with the entire premise. I say reggae has kept true to itself and it has had the success that it has made for itself. Those who love reggae are going to love reggae, oh, period. Is a I don't give a fuck about who don't love reggae. Reggae or why reggae can't go into Wisconsin. Who gives a fuck about Wisconsin? That bitch from Wisconsin will bring her ass to Brooklyn and be turned out by reggae anyway. So I'm just saying. So what? I think that the idea that we put the world as our standard of comparison for success, fuck them. Especially turn around and say Zulu and 5% Nation and then say that reggae suffered. Fuck that. Because of a Western standard. Fuck that. The point that I was seeking to make, and I hope that it didn't get lost Apparently. in translation, was that hip hop had that essence because hip hop came from yes, 5% and then money turned hip hop's asshole inside out. And the it didn't fuck? with reggae. So I'm. A so long you really story. want reggae to be successful so it can have its asshole turned out? I think out? It'd be, it can be successful and not have its asshole turned out. That's I the think whole reggae point. is successful. What the fuck else is there for reggae to do? Nothing. Just be as successful as the fuck Get you more are. Money. Why? Money is a tool. Why? Why? Because money, money is a tool Why? to build. Why? People got money. What the fuck they doing with the money they got now? Fuck you doing with the money now? Motherfuckers got money. Well, the Marleys and have tell set me up how much money program. these motherfucking hip hop niggas got. Fuck they doing? Putting more bread in their pocket, building Barclays Center, and fucking with the NFL. They're making five thousand dollar sneakers and five hundred dollar t shirts for who? Get the fuck out of here, yo. I think that Tasha is lit right now. What do you think? She's not. She just hype off of bullshit. 
Well, I mean, I agree. I agree, but... So I don't agree with those premises, and I just can't give them premise no light like it's valid. Like, well, fuck that shit. Everything has its own place, and I feel like I love reggae. Somebody could name some Indian shit, and them nigga Indian niggas talking about they compromise because they Bangladesh shit ain't popping because they ain't do shit. Well, I don't give a fuck. Whoever like Bangladesh music gonna find that music. Bollywood is popping. Okay, I, I bet you because they turn their asshole out. Because wow. if popping means success in the Western idea, it's called asshole inside out. Facto. So, and not in a good way. So you don't think that my premise is... If there ever is. I think that with more exposure and, and with more resources, that a lot of things positive can be done back home. I think that if you got a dollar, you can do it now. Fuck that. We always talk about what can be done later, what can be done later, if we had this, if we had that, if we had this. We got enough shit. It's what you do with it. It's what the fuck you do with it. And if people ain't turning fucking Jamaica and the inner city upside down with their bread right now, with the fucking, from the hood where they fucking came from, then fuck out of here. What niggas need more money for? Sneakers? Cars? Bitches? Fuck schools, here. museums. Show me where the fuck they're using their money for schools and museums. Ghetto Youth International Excuse Foundation. Me, the nigga Jay Z didn't open a museum. Fuck out of here. Well, and did you? Yeah, I've always been riding with Jay Z since the song "All I Need." My point is, like, I don't ride with nobody. Yes, if I, I fuck uh, with you, I J fuck with I, you. If I don't, I don't until I fuck with you again. But fuck out of here. <laughs> Excuse me. I thought there was revolutionary lyrics All inside of dick sucking for the Western idea of success. Get the fuck out of here, yo. I willed that Jay Z was fuck just me. waiting to stack enough paper where he was. For what? What the fuck else you need to do with more money? What else you need to do, nigga? You ain't open no school. You ain't do shit. What the fuck? Yeah, but in this society, when you're an upper but echelon. But you just said more bread is more openings, more positivity for the community. The niggas with bread ain't doing shit now. But so what do niggas need more bread for? The story's Take your not dollar done. and you do what the fuck you do. The and story's I bet you, you not be, done yet. So fuck. Uh, 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 see, we have we changed. We changed the criteria for no, niggas. No, we didn't change the yes, criteria for Yes, we do. We changed the criteria for niggas you shit. Even when heard niggas do white people yet. shit. And then we tell niggas who ain't doing white people shit. You'd be more successful if you did white people shit and then we turn around and say fuck whitey fuck out of here i never said to do more whitey shit. yes you did you saying if you compromise you everybody did succeeded I ever say, well, everybody there, succeeded a via room, compromisation compromise that reggae should compromise you no said i said you it, think it should they be should successful get it is successful without compromise it is successful that because it didn't compromise fuck yes out of here. and i think it's it should done be or, it's done already it's successful and it did not compromise anything else that is defining success based on western ideas it calls for a compromise of the ass Asshole. Fuck that. They got enough. They're good with it. It's a balance. It's enough fucking um, controversy. It's enough good shit. It's enough nigga you can't come here. It's enough nigga now you could come. It's enough shit going on in reggae that they can still maintain their fucking integrity and sense of self. Whether that self is fucked up or not is not the point. But all this idea of more success, meaning more money, that only comes from the West, meaning you can do more. Get the fuck out of here. Niggas ain't doing shit with the dollar they got. Um, in my defense, I just said earlier that money compromises medicine so i do so understand. now you have gone back to say that success is Can based I make on my money goddamn point only if you don't um contradict it first of all i like to big up the mollies who have the ghetto youth foundation big up to the mollies and they are actually are they in brooklyn they're in Jamaica. Okay, then. That's my motherfucking point. We ain't talking about the Marlies. We was just talking about Jay Z. Well, you let me fucking finish. Goddamn. Fuck out of here. When the nigga Stefan Marlies. You're talking about. I'm not talking about Stefan Marlies. Niggas talking about niggas 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 said, fuck out of here. Uh, so yeah. Everybody want to suffer. Yeah. The point I was making is the Marlies had the Ghetto You Foundation, which is doing things like setting also, up institutions in Jamaica. Yes. So I was talking about that aspect. So I of think it. they're fine. They have enough money that they continue to maintain. They're self sustainable. They have tons of businesses. They don't need reggae to make them succeed to do what the fuck they're doing. And the, they have the taken Jam what Rock they reggae cruise they, is one of those businesses. Bang. So We're all I'm saying out. is that has nothing to do with the success of reggae. Matter of fact, it's emblematic of the success of motherfucking reggae. And they're still eating and they can still do what they do for the community. And they're free. I agree. Bang. So there we go. End of story. But my do what you can it. with what's in your hand. And plant some motherfucking coffee beans, throw up some t-shirts on that are. shit, and get. I'm, I'm talking about everything that they do. Do what the fuck you do. They ain't not asking reggae to make them everything. They said reggae blessed us to this part. I'm gonna offer open coffee. I gonna 
open um, boat ride on do t-shirt shit they have become productive people it ain't just looking for reggae to make people to succeed so that people can succeed and not help their community these motherfuckers helping their community off of coffee beans fuck out of here do what you got what you have in your hand all that dreaming shit all that better shit is bullshit and despite what Warrior Sound said about you, I fucks with Alkaline. Who the Alkaline. fuck is Warrior Sound? He's the one who won the sound clash. I thought you said said about me out this bitch. Ah! Oh, because you're the warrior. The warrior princess. Yeah, but of course, Empress. why wouldn't he? Um, what he said about Alkaline? I fucks with Alkaline. Well, he, he took a shot at Alkaline. I fucks with Alkaline. Yeah. You need some fuckery in your life. I, need, I no, got to hear that bullshit. Juggernaut is my shit. All the pain, all the fight. Yo, come on. I love Alkaline. Vendetta. I love the struggle only make we better. I love Alka. They write me off like a letter, but we still a trendsetter. I uh, love Alka. I mean, Juggernaut. you gotta have some bullshit. I love, I love Alka. I love but Alka. I mean, his name, he said he's like a battery, you know, positive and negative charge. So he gives you positive and negative. Cute. I can mess with that. Whatever. And, if you like, ne I need negative shit. Just like I need positive shit. Like, I don't wanna go to no balance. reggae. I don't wanna go to no reggae fucking party and hear Bob Marley. I mean, that's a fucking fact. That shit pisses me off. I'm gonna take a piss. I'm going outside to smoke. I wanna hear fuck shit. I wanna hear shake your ass, whine your ass down to the ground shit. Well, I think that this is the time for us to wrap it up, even though I didn't get to, you know, make all my points because you can't out wisdom or wisdom. You cannot. That is a well-known maxim within the nation of gods and nerves. But Why this has been that? two chicks in a DX with one, one chick, chick. <laughs> <laughs> and at one time just a DX. And willfully, uh, y'all did not get repulsed by the sound of my voice and enjoyed it. Unlike uh, Tasha there who thought that I was being freaky with my voice today. I was not. I'm just talking the way I talk. No, you talk about fat ass. Ooh, I'm, yeah, I'm, but I'm, I was I'm, in the moment. I'm, I was oof. actually seeing them in front of me. I know, but I wasn't. And even if I did, I'd just be like, okay, why are these asses in my face? Some of them were horrendous. Some of them were like horror. I mean, it was just, <laughs> it was like, wow. I mean, wait, let's don't end on bad asses. We got to end. No, no, no. I mean, I, I mean, horrendous season. in a good way. It was Do like. Do people fuck with the holidays? I mean, I don't know. But is it Kwanzaa? Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa. Is it Christmas? Is it Hanukkah? Until you know, I could do something for Hanukkah. I could do something for Kwan week. for Christmas, but I don't have anything for y'all. It's Kwanzaa songs. Stay beautiful. Oh Lord! And this is two chicks in DX. I am the DX twenty one, and to my left, I have Tasha Mabry TM, Tasha the Tasha Farai, and I am the DX twenty one. Until next, well, the week after next, y'all again. Stay beautiful. Peace. Oh, big up to Simon Protectors for Kwanzaa, December 26th at the African Burial, Burial Ground. Peace. African Burial Ground. I think I might check it. Peace.